Hello everyone, my name is Mark Panuok Det Suwanathat. I'm a researcher at Science Technology Innovation Policy Institute or STIPI at KMUTT, King Mongkut University of Technology, Thonburi. Thailand has a new curriculum. It's called Computing Science Curriculum. So what is this curriculum about? This is the first time that I explain the curriculum in English on a video. So the core philosophy of this new curriculum has changed a lot from the old one. Previously, when kids study computers or ICT, uh, they, studied, they studied under the umbrella of the occupational uh, education or learning how to do this trade as a trade so that they can grow up and have this option uh, of new jobs or new careers in, computer, in computing. But this computing science course is not focusing on occupation because the computing skill is now considered not to be an occupation skill, specific skill, but it is a skill for life. Uh, everyone has to have this skill to live peacefully, safely, and ethically in this new world, in the digital world. So we call it computing science. Notice the focus on the word science. Uh, it is now under the umbrella of science education, not as a vocational or occupation education anymore. And the Thai word is called Vithyagan Kamnuan, which is a direct translation of computing and science. In the new curriculum, even though it is a mandatory or basic course for everyone to take in Thailand, we are not adding new content to it. In fact, compared to the old curriculum, we take away a lot of content. It is with less content, with less things to memorize, but more things to think about. We focus on thinking, not clicking. Thinking, not clicking. So, on this slide, you see on the left-hand side, it's a, uh, it's a draft of a cartoon character called uh, Nong Goi or Goi. Uh, she's a very good girl. She thinks a lot and she tries to calculate, uh, try to imagine result of her actions before she takes any action. On the right hand side, you see a draft of a page that will appear on page 63 of the textbook for grade one students. You see, computing science tech, uh, computer textbook usually has this diagram of hardware on what to call each piece of hardware on the very first on the very first page of the book. But now it is moved to the page 63. So what happened to the first 60 pages? It's all about thinking. It's all about thinking. And this draft that you see the components of a computer, that is my first draft. I wrote it myself. But when it is in the final version on the book by the graphics designer, the number of things that are explained on around the, the computer has reduced by a lot, about half of it remains. The other half were thrown away because the book, uh, the authors, uh, I myself and a lot of other people, after consultation, we decide that we don't want kids to know everything about computers. If they do want to know everything, that's great. They can look it up on Wikipedia or on any place. Their dads, their moms can look it up for them. But the main purpose is this, of the textbook is just to introduce just enough content so that the kids feel like they are more curious. They want to learn more and they go find out more information and they have enough seed for thinking. The focus is on thinking. So when the kids see a computer, what do they think about? We want them to think about what to create today. What should I create with this smartphone today? Maybe a video clip on YouTube? What should I create with this tablet? Maybe I will draw something on the tablet and show it to the world. What should I create with this laptop? Very nice laptop. Maybe I will uh, write a Word document uh, or maybe make a poster with PowerPoint or some other presentation or graphics software. When the kids see a computer of any kind, we want them to think about what should I create today, 
not what should I be watching today or what should I be playing today. Playing is nice. Watching documentaries or even cartoons is nice too. It stimulates their thinking, stimulate their uh, imagination. But we don't want them to think about consuming media all the time. We want to turn them to, uh, from just a consumer into a producer, just a taker to a creator. And that's much more fun. So nobody in this world, at this age, can ever, ever escape the digital world. It's not just for future programmers. It's not just for science students. Because if you say this curriculum is just for the science students, what happens to the art students? What happened to the kids who like literature, who likes to do uh, farming? What happens to them when they grow up and have to do real job? They will have to live in the digital world anyway, and they cannot escape the digital world. For example, on the left-hand side, the artists must sell their work. They have to have they have to be able to organize online events to meet with their fans. To have to have to uh, a website, they can create it themselves, or they can hire someone to create it. So they have to live in the digital world, even though they are artists. If they are a farmer, they have to have uh, a source for finding good fertilizers. They have to be able to review read reviews on what uh, suppliers are good, what suppliers are bad, and they have to check the uh, growth rates of their crops. <laughs> and they have to put that into a table somewhere, whether it's a paper or Microsoft Excel or Google Sheet or some kind of elaborate, elaborate database. They have to know the market price of their crops. They have to be able to check and monitor soil conditions. So a lot of opportunity for farmers to use IoT or any digital technology to improve their productivity. In the book, this is a picture from the book, uh, there's one case where the computer breaks down and the smart farm that the, that the father uses cannot function because there's no computer. So they roll back to the basic. So they use a, use a buffalo to plow their, their field. And in this case, the, the dad takes this opportunity as a teaching moment to teach their kids that we must be able to survive with our computer. And that's a very good that's a very good value to have to hold. And we want to have the kids uh, to, we want to give that good value to the kids who read our book. So that's uh, the overall philosophy of the curriculum. What about the uh, the components of the curriculum? Over our picture, there are three things. Computer science or CS on the upper left hand side. The ICT or information and communication technology on the right hand side. And down below is DL or digital literacy. I said down below. It doesn't mean that it's not important. In fact, anything down below is a foundation. It's a very solid foundation. It's a very important, in my mind, it's the most important thing that we have the other two parts. The kids have to be a very good digital citizen, so they have to be able to read and write in the digital world. They have to live safely in the digital world, don't be fooled by scams. And they have to behave ethically in the digital world as well. So this safety, ethics, and wisdom on what to take, what to believe, what not to believe, is called digital literacy. It's the backbone of the curriculum. In fact, the curriculum say the, the three parts are of equal importance. Uh, I say DL is the most important. That's just my personal opinion. What are the other two parts? You know about the ICT already. ICT is just like the old curriculum, but we changed it a little bit. Uh, ICT used to be about learning how to use hardware and software. We teach kids how to use uh, various kinds of software. We teach them what the meanings of the icons are, where the menu bars are located. But today, 
We know, we all know that the software are changing rapidly and the kids can learn faster than any teacher can teach or even any textbook writer can write. So we change the focus from being a user to being a creator. creator. We want the kids to be able to create any work with a computer, any work at all that they like. They don't have to specialize in everything, but they must be able to create with something that is according to their liking. And you see the word data, data, data. Data is the key, uh, is the key asset in the new world. It's the world of data. We want to teach ICT as a tool to organize, to collect, to organize, to manage, to process, and to draw conclusion based on data. We want the kids to grow up and love data. When they face with a problem in their daily life or any problem that they have to make a decision on, instead of relying on their intuition alone, they will go out and find the data, the relevant data that can guide them toward a good conclusion. And it's just not uh, their personal opinion. It's a decision based on data. So we want the kids today to grow up to be a data-loving adult of tomorrow. And the other part that gets people a little bit worried, some people a little bit worried, is called CS or computer science. Computer science is a part of computing science. Computing science, uh, computer science, what do we teach? We teach uh, coding algorithms, logical thinking, systematic thinking, sequential thinking, uh, how to organize uh, thought into code or into pseudocode or into any kind of structure of instructions that the computer can understand. We teach them basically computational thinking. Computational thinking, I'll have a slide on that later. But the focus of CS is stimulating the kids to think, think, and keep thinking. The thinking part is very important. It's more important than coding. The coding is just a toy. It's just a tool to teach kids how to think. We don't teach them how to think the same way. The coding is a way to teach them that thinking is important. Thinking, ref uh, thinking will reflect in the result. And thinking, everyone can think differently and see different results, or even take different approaches to come to the same conclusion, to come to the same answer. We want them to be able to uh, use coding, which is a very wonderful tool to teach kids how to think, to learn about computational thinking. That's the core thing. And later on, well, I'll explain how the CS helps DT, uh, helps DL, how computer science education helps the kids to have better digital literacy and how it helps ICT as well. So this one can help the other two and can help much more beyond this. So here's another slide from IPST. It's mostly in Thai, but it's more detailed and more beautiful too. And what is computational thinking? Janet Wing, I, oh, by the way, Janet Wing is not the only source for what computational thinking is. There are many sources and many sources uh, interpret or explain them a little bit of dif a, a little bit differently but they are all compatible uh, there's no uh, disagreement in the in the relevant part uh, in the significant part but let's go with Janet Wing's version for now Janet Wing is a professor uh, at Columbia University, formerly at Carnegie Mellon University. Her paper on computational thinking got cited thousands of times. Computational thinking is just a fundamental problem-solving skill. It's for everyone. And it's just, she, she says that it's, uh, it's as important as ability, ability to read, write, and do basic arithmetic. And according to Computer Science Te Teacher Association of America, CSTA. Uh, computational thinking 
is just a problem solving skill that involves formulating a problem in such a way that a computer can solve it or in such a way that it can be automated sometimes pe some people say uh, in such a uh, problem solving in such a way that an information processing agent can carry out the task and that's a very good term because it includes a computer it also can mean a person it doesn't have to involve a digital electronic computer all the time computational thinking therefore is relevant to managers as well soldiers commanders any person who has to think strategically to have to plan ahead have to have computational thinking in some way in some form or another maybe they don't call it computational thinking right away and that's okay but in this course, we call this way of thinking about solving problems in such a way that other people can carry out the task automatically in a clear way, in a non-ambiguous way as computational thinking. We are not teaching computational thinking so that the kids can do coding and become coders in the future. Although that's a good thing, I don't disagree. It's a good thing that the kids can have uh, a very good coding skill and learning and growing up to be a good programmer and earn a lot of money. That's a good thing. But we don't want everybody in Thailand to go to that part, right? We, want, we still want farmers. We still want artists. We still want teachers. We still want policemen. We still want many other occupations. occupations. We don't want to teach them to think like a computer all the time uh, or solve every problem with a computer. That would be a fool. That, that would be silly, right? Uh, some problems are better solved with uh, just a kind heart. <laughs> we know that. So instead of the arrangement like this, we swap it. We swap it. We teach, we use coding as just a tool to teach kids so that they have computational thinking. Coding is not the end. Coding is just a mean, a very fun mean, by the way. Coding is just a tool to teach computational thinking so that the kids grow up to use this skill in their daily life. Uh, they, they can be uh, a problem solver that think logically and think in steps like a, an algorithm. Uh, they know that if they find the problems that can be automated, they can think about it this way. But they don't have to use this skill all the time. It's just like learning how to, how to use a sword or how to use some kind of tools, uh, hand drills, uh, power drill. We don't have to use that all the time. Sometimes we just use basic tools, right? Uh, but they have to have that in their arsenal. It's important that everyone has that skill. It's not important that they have to use it all the time. It's not. So please be clear of our goal. Our goal is to give the kids the option, a very good option, so that they can solve their problems in their field later in their life. And if, they, if some of them grow up to be a coder and earn a lot of money, so that's great. That's a good side effect. It's not, it's not the main target of our curriculum. So in the next video, I'll explain what the three components, digital literacy, computing, uh, computer science, and ICT are about. And I'll use some examples from the textbook, the computing science textbook by IPST. Uh, for this video, it's already 20 minutes, so let's stop here and uh, let's give credit to a team of curriculum and textbook developers from many, many universities like uh, King Mongkut University of Technology, Thonburi, uh, uh, King Mongkut Institute of Technology, Lat Kabang, Kase Saad University, Chulalongkorn University, and many other places, uh, including schools around Thailand. And all of these institutions come together because of the host of this project, this grand mega project. It's called IPST. IPST is the main. Uh, is the main host of this curriculum. IPST stands for the Institute for the Promotion of Teaching Science and Technology. So, I'll see you next on the next video. Thanks.